Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're back in the shop working on our Vestarms Flintlock Gemmer Hawking Kit from muzzleloaders.com. Full disclosure, I want to say muzzleloaders.com did give me a discount on the kit that we're using in this video, but that is not by any means affecting my commentary about the kit. I want to talk a little bit about our sights that come with this kit. These are nice steel or iron sights, which is nice to see on, on one of the more affordable muzzleloader kits out there. It has kind of the traditional buckhorn Hawkins sight on here. Um, I'm going to set the rear sight down for just a moment. This is a rather thick front sight compared to a lot of others that you'll see on the market. Uh, I don't necessarily myself right off the bat, you know, how that's going to affect this particular muzzleloader. So I'm not going to thin this down a whole lot right now. What I am going to do is I'm going to clean this up like we have all of our other parts to a nice bright finish so that we can we can deal with this down the road. Because this is so small, you may be inclined to say, you know, I don't really wanna mess with this. Um, and I, I can understand that on your rear sight, but for your front sight, I think it's important to polish this because a lot of your sight picture is going to rely on light reflecting off of this rear face. Uh, it can be difficult to see your front sight if it's a dark color and brightening up a face here is going to help you see and uh, and get a better sight picture on your muzzleloader. The rear sight on this kit is interesting. Uh, we do have a screw that's here. I took it out, but I wanted to take this apart so that we could take a look at this and get it cleaned up. But this does have some adjustment for elevation. So the sight does move up and down, which is handy. But when you're taking this apart, you need to be very careful because there's a small spring in here. So I'm going to open this sight up and you see that tiny spring. I want to make sure not to lose that. So I'm going to set it aside, put it in my parts bin. From there, we have a small pin that goes in here. There's a couple ways to deal with this. You can knock that pin out and then you can clean everything up. That would probably be the, the whole hog, you know, full authentic way to do it. Um, that being said, you could probably get by with chucking up this whole site in the vise cleaning up the faces that you can see and going on about your business. I do recommend taking the screw out and that spring out though, just so you don't get them, you know, marred or dinged up. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to mess with that, those two pieces of hardware. But from this point here, I think you can easily get this cleaned up um, by not removing that pin and things. Uh, be careful as you're doing that though. You can see we have a little bit of a bump here. Um, from that casting. Just be careful, be cautious. Sights are very important to any firearm and a, and a muzzleloader, I think, especially. If you have good sights, a good barrel, and a good shooter, your muzzleloader will always perform well for you. So just take some caution and care uh, like you're going to see me doing as we get these cleaned up. I'm going to get out my little pin buddies here. Okay, that is small enough. So I've got an old set here you've seen me use on the channel here of drive pin punches. Uh, neat wood container here in the shop. I'm taking the smallest one that I have here and I'm going to pop that pin out. So there's my rolled pin. Also don't want to lose that. We're going to drop it in the parts bin and uh, hope that we can remember where all this stuff goes. That being said, you know, it will behoove you to um, to take pictures of these parts as you take them apart and as you work on them, especially once we get to the trigger assembly. So there's the two sections of my rear sight. We can set those to the side here, pop our, our pin punches out of view. Our parts are getting pretty small now and a few of you have brought one up already, so I'm happy to bring it out. But I'm gonna be using this little hand vise to hold on to these sight pieces. Um, this is just a really handy, tiny vise that allows you to grip and hold these tiny pieces. You can use them just in your hand like so, or it's nice you can drop them into your main vise and use the same setup that you're comfortable with. Um, you can find these antique malls. Uh, you know, there's a few antique tool guys on Instagram that collect and sell stuff like this. I encourage you to check out. They are a little bit harder to acquire now. Uh, the antique tools have become more of a thing, which is cool. Um, so keep your eyes peeled antique malls, trade, you know, uh, flea markets and things. You might be able to pick one up. Definitely worth uh, just about whatever folks are charging for them just because of their versatility. So 
Well, there's that face cleaned up. You can loosen it up. I can come up here. I want to be careful not to squish that dovetail. Now I'm going to switch over to my sandpaper, I think, here. Or, or my safe sided files, what I should really switch over to. So with this safe side, I'm not worried about cutting into or running into my dovetail here. This is tricky because we can't get into the whole face all at once. <laughs> and I have a cat here. But do a few passes in each area. And then shift around. Okay. Because we have to work around this dovetail, it's a little difficult to get this whole face at once. So I'm working in, in an area and then moving around so I can keep an even finish or try to all around the site. And this will be the same for both sides. You know, it's not gonna be perfect, but you can get it pretty close with your file. Because this hole here is so close to that edge, I'm gonna kind of back off of working that section. I have a little bit of a rough spot back here, so I'm just gonna hit it with my sandpaper and stay away from that front end. It would be nice if that was a little more centered, but you know, I get it. And as long as you're careful, it shouldn't be a problem at all. So now this vertical face on our dovetail needs a little love. Like I said, is it perfect? No. It'll get the job done though for us. So then we can flip it over. Nope, wrong vice. So we can flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna wanna make sure to do the rear and the front here as well. I am not at all worried about this stuff down in here. That's gonna be hidden. Don't need to clean that up at all. Uh, if you want, it might be smart to, to come in here and clean up the bottom, only because we have a little bit of a burr there from uh, that process there. You're not really gonna see the bottom of this apart from that. So I'm just gonna clean up that burr real quick. And that's all I'm gonna touch on the base of this site. Just like that. That's all you need to do. Just give it a little kiss. A little You're good to go. You can see here again, really close to that top face. We're gonna be careful as we're cleaning that up. We're just gonna kiss that 45 with our file and our sandpaper. Uh, but we do have a bit of a burr there that we want to get rid of. So we're going to take our file, just like we did on the other side. I'm going to clean it up. You'll notice on that pass, I came in and cut in line with the dovetail on either side. That gives me a small section here in the middle to clean up and level out. Rather than coming across here and then trying to clean up there and clean up there. It gives me a smaller section to blend and I, I think it, it's a little bit easier. So um, I'd recommend trying it this way instead of the way I did it the first time. And that's just all, that's all part of the learning process on this stuff. Um, I'm still learning. Everybody's still learning. And as always, you know, I'm not a professional. Uh, not an award-winning builder or anything, just like building these kits, you know, they're a lot of fun. So you can take what I said with a grain of salt or you can, you can follow right along. A little sandpaper helps out. Now we're gonna gently hit this 45 with our sandpaper, only because it's so thin around that pinhole. I just get a little nervous about it. And again, I'm using a pretty worn out piece of sandpaper, but it's getting the job done for me.
Okay. Wrong vice again. That's okay. I have a couple little nicks in there. I'm not sure if you can even make them out. Um, but because this site lays in there, I'm not worried about that at all. I'm really just looking to get an even finish with our browning solution when we get to that stage. Um, so don't really need to do a lot of a lot of hard work there. Now the front end of this site is going to be a little bit more visible, so I'm going to take a little bit more caution with it. Making sure we get it cleaned up and even. Those small faces like that can be real tricky to get right. Nice thing is you have the handicap of a little sandpaper, you can kind of blend those in. You're okay there. Now when it comes to doing this, you know, you can use these angles that you have to cut in there to kind of even up that surface. So you can see here, this side is a little bit thicker as far as this face here goes than this side. And we can work to correct that here in this stage and make it a little cleaner, a little more even. Like I said, working on the, the barrel tang, we can treat these as kind of like child and parent faces or lines in here. And we can turn this face here into a parent face and allow it to define this face and this face by evening up that line, if that makes sense. So I can come in here and file, and I can favor this side over here where it was thinner. We can kind of even that up a little bit. There we go, it's not too bad. Just simple touch with your file there just enough to get it done and then you're out don't overdo it you'll get yourself into trouble and on these small parts it's really important not to get into trouble because you don't have you don't have any room you know you don't have any material that you can kind of hide that in so that's cleaned up like i said we removed that burr i'm pretty happy with that dropping it into the parts bin and now we can look at this guy here. So, <laughs> we don't have a great situation here. You can see that really the only material that we have here on top of this pinhole is the bulge from when that pinhole was drilled. Wasn't drilled very centered. Um, through either of these, if it was just a, a 16th or a, or a 32nd down, it would have been a little bit better for us. So, you know, you can factor that in to what you're doing. You know, I could have just left these as they came and, and gone from there. Um, but we chose not to do that. So, we're going to be real cautious as we're cleaning this face up here um, so that we don't break through there. This screw here is gonna hold that side in pretty well, but it's nicer to have two points when we can. So we're gonna be really cautious. Um, you know, I might be eating my own words here, <laughs> to be honest with you, but that's okay. What I'm gonna do first is clamp this in from its side here. I'm gonna clean up a little bit of that burr from that pinhole. Do that on both sides. That's gonna help it drop into the the rear sight base assembly a little bit easier for us you know when it comes to these kits i think the sights are a weak point not just with invest arms but with every really i guess imported kit it's not to knock any of them at all i think they're accurate and reliable 
the ones I've seen have been, and a, a great way to get started. And in a way, it's good that the sights are a weak point because sights are easily replaceable. So if you're working on this and you go through that pin and, and just holding it in with the screw isn't working out well, don't worry about it. A ton of American companies here have sight options for you that will drop in to these kits. It's just how it is. I don't, I'm not knocking Invest Arms at all. This is just a weak point on a lot of these kits. And it's something to be aware of when you're shopping for your muzzleloader kit as you get into these mass produced cast parts here. So I'm grabbing just the base of that buckhorn rear sight here. And I'm gonna grab my sandpaper and we're gonna work this real gentle. In all reality, I'm not, I'm not even going to work that anymore. I'm gonna, <laughs> if that has a little bit of a different finish out there on the end, I'm fine with that. Um, if it has a little bit of model gray in there, that's going to be fine. I'm going to come in here a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sweat over that. Seeing that get bright there makes me a little nervous. So I'm going to, I'm going to back off there. It's something to be aware of as you're working on this stuff. Be aware of those tolerances. Be aware of, you know, where you could break through and, and work around them. You know, this little minute detail here of this not being perfect, you know, somebody might see it down the road. Of course, you know, everybody watching knows that it's there, but it's not going to make or break the kit. And I would rather have a functional site than worry about making sure this was perfect. So, you know, that's just kind of where we're at on it. Don't sweat the small stuff on it um, and, and enjoy the process. I'm gonna very gently grab my sight like that and we're gonna clean up this interior face. I'm just riding this angled face here with my file. I'm getting there. It's kind of funny how you can file there and I mean, everything's bright, but that little spot, you know, and, and looking at it, it doesn't look like that's too far in there, but it is, you know, so just keep filing, be gentle, try to keep a nice, even surface. It's silly, but that's the kind of thing that starts to bug me. You know, I, I could just leave it, but if I left that there, <laughs> I'd always know it was there. And think, ah, oh, if you just spent five more minutes, man, be nice and clean and it's a lot easier to do it right the first time than come back to it down the road uh, when you get one of these done you're just excited you spent so much time on it you're ready to go out and shoot and uh, you're not really thinking about wanting to go back in and, and fix something that you, that you didn't do quite to to what you wanted so you know if you can get in there and Do it right the first time. You'll thank yourself and your grandkids or you know, the next person to use your muzzleloader will too. You can switch over to top side here. Top face here already has a ground finish on it. So we can come in here with our sandpaper, I think. And take it back. We're coming in with a file. To get a better handle on this, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it back into its base. It's gonna make it easier to clean out this interior area of the site. Wrong vice. So I can grip that dovetail there. Make sure my screw is tight. So I'm going to switch over to this really fine, really small file here. 
so I can get in here and brighten up these areas. If you don't have a file, you know, small like this, the scrap piece of wood and use it to back your sandpaper or another small file to back it and get in there and clean it up. I can do that the same for down in here. Yeah, you can come in here with one of your half rounds that has a little bit of a point on it. You can clean up that flat area. Make sure to keep your file in line with your casting. You can see there we have a little bit of a casting imperfection there. I'm not going to jump in there and, and worry about that. Uh, what I am going to do is clean up this curve a little bit. And then I can turn this up on its side like this. Come in here with a round file, clean up that curve some. It's a little difficult to get, so it might be easier just to hold it in your vise like this. Mine has a little bit of a burr in there. Imagine from the casting, so I'm trying to clean that up some. Flip over, we'll do the other side now. I can even come in here and get that a little bit. I don't have much of a stroke length there, so not going to be much. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs> Tell me if I'm being a fool. Okay. Okay with that now. I'm going to grab this and the vise, work on cleaning up this outer curve, then we'll move on to our front sight. There we go. That's our rear sight cleaned up. Looks pretty good. Like I said, you know, it's not perfect. Got a couple spots in there, but I think it's going to give us a little more reliability down the road. I'm going to, there we go, a little bit of a burr there that's catching my fingers. But, um, you know, pretty pleased with that. Assembly and disassembly is, is nice and easy, and it's, it's easy to come in here and, and clean that up a little bit. And uh, I think you should, if it's the kind of thing that... Um, you know, if you, if you care about your sights and, and want them to match the rest of your muzzleloader, it's, the, it's a real simple thing to do.